Uh, uh, can you imagine us having dinner with Lou Gossett Jr.? No, I can't you imagine it. You just got George's earwax all over your ears, bud. It's, it, it's all right, man. You know, we, 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 we brothers to the end and shit. <laughs> now you two are reeking of fear. <laughs> you know, and that's why this is a sexy show. You guys I nailed it. You, you, you're, you're great. You ask great questions. You listen. They say that the road ain't no place to start a family. I'm really beaming. I'm really steaming. Beaming, yeah. Right? <laughs> One floor below me, you don't even know me. I love you. I am a zombie apocalypse. I have a backpack. I know how to kill. You guys have such amazing energy. And that is really, really, really something that inspires me, encourages me, and enlightens me. All you need is love. What? Na, 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 na. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Scott. And I appreciate that uh, compliment. That's fantastic, Suki. Anya, very nice to meet so you. Good. He says, Thank God. I, I thought you were sitting on the cat. <laughs> Ah, yeah. well, uh, Suk, look at us on a Monday afternoon, no less. I mean, this is such a weekday holiday treat, you know, before Suk. Christmas. Look at us pushing ourselves. At I'm not used to it being I like yeah, I'm not... in the afternoon. It's not like a late night special. Suk, I feel like the lighting in my dungeon here makes me look a little younger because the sunlight's coming in now. You know what I, I mean? I feel look better angelic. in the afternoon. Okay. Angelic. <laughs> Is that the, that's the word you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at all these people joining us already. Pam's oh, here. Little suspects. Listen, here's the deal. We have a, 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 a Hollywood superstar on with us this afternoon. And sometimes in this business, you got to go on their schedule. Right. You know what I mean? You got to go on their schedule. We're usually on 7.30 at night. But when Dom Lombardozzi needs to do it at 2.30 on a Monday, you do it 2.30 on a Monday. Whatever because, Dom wants, Dom gets. Yeah, you listen, the guy, he'll, he'll beat the crap out of you. If you don't, that's number one. <laughs> But uh, everybody joining it. Let's, let's look at Jordan Gray trying to get on my good side. Handsome guy, Scott. You know, look people, they don't want us to send Jordan, the money what are you now. Do it, so. Jordan. <laughs> we got folks checking in from Illinois, uh, North Dakota, New York, of course. Everybody loving this Monday afternoon. Because, Suk, listen, quite frankly, we're usually off on Monday. I'm doing my WWE stuff. You're doing TLC stuff. We're usually off on Monday. But I like this daytime shtick. But you know what? You like actually, I, I wrapped up my TLC thing pretty early today. How about you? No, well, listen, you know, WWE never stops. I barely it got my stopped. barely got my suit off and got onto the uh onto the show. Is that why you look so handsome? What? <laughs> Just try. Hold on, Suk, I got mouse problems. Hold on. You call you said I was handsome. I got flustered. Oh God, you're so funny. Oh, there we go. Anyway, Jane Goodson joining us from Alabama. Michigan. Yes. Wow. Look at you guys. Listen, we have so many things going on with this show. Uh, Thursday night, as everybody knows, is Christmas Eve. Um, Suk, you look a little dark. You need a little better. You need a little light on your face. I'm trying. I'm that. trying. Because yeah. so, you got that big sunlight coming in from behind you. But you You're look like, good. don't you have blackout shades? I was like, listen, I'm not <laughs> sleep I'm not doing this from my basement. So we've done 130 so. of these shows. You should have blackout <laughs> shades right now. So listen, Suk, Thursday night. We have this Christmas Eve spectacular. We started with it was going to be a, it was going to be just Phil right singing a couple of Christmas tunes, and then once we announced it, we've had so many entertaining singers on this show. Everybody started emailing me, "Hey, can I send you a song? Can I send you a song?" I think we have about twelve people now. Here's the, look. This is what we have, and I don't even have half the people on there. You got Jordan Bennett's joining us, David Higgins, hello sister. And I'm going to put up, day, right? Uh, well, listen, I'm going to put up. Don't give it all away yet, because okay. we have a couple. We have a couple more that we added, and the show will be up nine o'clock on Christmas Eve. And I got to tell you, just seeing what everybody's sending in, uh, it is going to. This could be one of the best Christmas Eve specials to ever be produced. 
Oh, look at Jesse. Jesse Flower says, I thought Suki went tanning. <laughs> well, this is my brown uh, skin. My brown yeah, skin, Jesse. Yeah, she, she is a little Indian, so she does already have. She looks one. like she has a tan. Actually, I am tan all over. Look, no tan look lines. You, so nicely done. <laughs> I'm as, I'm as white. You're trying to take a peek. <laughs> yeah, really. What do, you, what do you got going on there? A little, little midday cleavage, a little Monday cleavage. So what's happening? Hold on. <laughs> so funny. Do you think people do that during a Zoom, like when they're having like a little sexy oh, time, and they're like, "Oh, did you see this?" Absolutely, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little oh, sexy yeah, yeah. thought. I could never do that with a serious face. Listen, <laughs> so, <laughs> Dom's going to join us in just a few minutes, but I, I got a couple of videos to show you, which are were pretty funny. You know how I love, you know how I love pranks, right? I love the prank yeah. videos, and I'm I'm a 15 year old, um, so I have two videos. Um, you know, they're a little on the kid's side, but, okay. uh, you know, they're, they're very um, sophomoric, if you will. I like but, sophomoric. <laughs> okay, so here's the first one. This guy was doing a video with his wife. They were doing some type of instructional video. He pretends he's not feeling well, and this is what he does. Take a look. Cameron, are you okay? Why, why is it messing with your stomach? You know what? No, because that was a salad. That I had when I was feeling sick. You okay? Okay. All right. So I think I would say. Boom. <laughs> Would, can I tell you something? I think I would lose my, you know what? I don't know. If, I mean, you would have threw up right back. Up. I would have. I have such a like not a good retention for those things that would just uh, have come right back up. It would have been, a, would have and it would have been the real thing coming back up. If you know what I mean. And Sook, there's there's one more that was on Twitter this morning. Um, this is just Sook. Flatulent jokes are just funny. Okay. <laughs> To put it mildly, all right. Twenty twenty so has like, gotten us there, huh? Yeah, okay. This was go up ahead. on Twitter, right? So after you see this, you, you okay. can't imagine the 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 debate that went on whether or not this was funny. It wasn't funny. Damaging to kid Suki. T take a look at this. Tell me what you think. A teacher on a Zoom call with her kids plays a little trick. Here you go. Your journey's book. So you can't imagine the, the the diatribes on Twitter underneath that video. This ki the kids are at home. We shouldn't be showing their home uh, in space, and the teacher shouldn't be teaching. It's like, dude, it's a fart joke. Can you just lighten up, Francis? 
It was unbelievable how people oh, were ripping Oh, yeah, because video. of all the disclosure rights. I mean, oh, forget I mean it, you know man. what you had to sign to get your kids on Zoom, right? You basically had to sign a lot. And, like, you know, the teacher, if they notice anything that's off in your – they, you know, they were supposed to report things. Yeah. That's a <laughs> – my daughter was horizontal today while she was on her Zoom class. I'm like, dude, you supposed supposed to be sitting upright. For oh, this that's good because my son was, uh, I think, editing Fortnite videos in between Zoom. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on break. Every Scott, this is a thing that we talk about all the time. I don't know if our viewers feel this way. Why are ch our children always on a 15 minute break when you walk? Oh yeah, no, it's a 15 minute break. 15 minute constantly. break. 15 minute I'm in between break. classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like my husband. That wasn't me. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. What? No, so, your memory's um, off. You're off. You're off. You're off. It's insane. So You're listen, off. let's get to our first guest because uh, we made him wait long enough now. Um, Dom Lumberdozy is a uh, superstar actor. He's been in in so many of of the great movies and TV shows that we that we watched. He's been an Entourage, Souk. He was oh in God. The Irishman, which was just on. We're going to show you Maybe a little bit. Of, just watched it, actually. Right. The uh, King of Staten Island, which you love. love it. From, from Staten, Staten Island. Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, You're God. a Staten Island girl. Um, listen, let's bring him in. There he is, Dom Lombardozzi. <laughs> Dom, how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. I, uh, I, I, Suk, I've been trying to get Dom for like six months now, and finally our agent spoke negotiations we broke him down we got him on the show <laughs> here he is and uh it, it's great that dom listen man let's get right to it bud because we you know the movies and tv shows we just name when you when you go look at your, your your movie database i mean you've been in so many things we could sit here all day talking about all of them um but i just wanted to talk to you you know first and foremost uh where, where i really came to know you was you know ray donovan um, right. I think it was the second to last season, right? You 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 showed. Uh, was it last se the last season? season? Six. Was it the last or second to last? Uh, second to last. Second to last season, right? You showed up. Um, you 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 saved Ray when he jumped into the river, and and that's how we got to know you. Uh, you guys became you know friends, and and basically you know between the two of you beating the crap out of each other, and the two of you getting <laughs> beat beat up. Um, you know, what, what was that like for you, man? Just being, you know, uh, uh, just such a, a main <laughs> character in a show that that's, you know, so prolific, like a Ray Donovan. Well, the, the thing was, um, it was really only supposed to be for, uh, I think three or four episodes originally. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they just kept writing. They just kept writing stuff and and it, and 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 adding to the character and making him more of a fixture of that 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 season and that whole storyline. And um, I, I think I wind up doing I think like ten episodes out of the twelve. Wow! Um, but it was great. I, I mean, uh, it was a a different type of character uh, because uh, essentially he was. Even though I'm, I'm, I, you know, I have a little size on me and 220 pounds and f somewhat physically imposing, but then again, I'm no wrestler. But <laughs> uh, uh, I could throw, I could throw a mean left hook, though. Um, he was emotionally the weakest guy in the room, mm -hmm. and that was something that went from the first episode right up until the last. So a lot of pivots, uh, just uh, something to always be conscious of uh, when when working. And and, and having Liev on the other side of the table, I mean, it's just, uh, he just, he, he makes everybody better. Yeah. So, and, and you really grew, off the table they, from some really intimidating people. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. I mean, what's it like to like, work on the set of the Irishman. I mean, like, I, I mean, you work with some like, like the you old. Gotta block soup, you got to block it. You got to, you got to leave that at the door. Really? Oh yeah. You got to leave it at the door. I remember um, the first, uh, my first day of work on the Irishman. I, and I've said this a few times on, on a few different podcasts, but um, I, I was in the makeup trailer at two 30 in, in the morning. Right. But by the time everyone came to work, I'm already done up. 
So they, they call a blocking, which is basically a rehearsal, you know, positions uh, for you, you know, for the actors, for the, um, <clears throat> for the camera people. Yeah. And, um, and I'm like, I'm going to be doing a scene with Joe Pesci. I mean, they don't know what I look like. Um, and, uh, and right away, you just have to leave it. You just have to leave it. Jesus, look at that. And look at that. that's the make. Yeah, the makeup was incredible, Dom. I mean, uh, Fat Tony, right? I mean, I didn't even know it was you until I saw the credits. Yeah, every, you know, the funny thing is everybody, the majority of the people were aged down and I was aged up. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. I couldn't Wild. even what imagine what it's like to sit across the table from De Niro and Pesci. I mean, I got to imagine a guy growing up in the Bronx. I mean, that's like, you know, the holy grail of it all, right? Joe Pesci was my guy. You, you know, um, he's the guy who I always uh, looked up to. Uh, just what he did with the comedy, the with 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 the uh, with the more dramatic role, um, the, his energy, and then working with him on this project where he totally goes the opposite way, where he's more stoic, where he's more calm, where that that menacing quality that he has, being that little guy and 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 scaring the hell out of everybody, he does it in a, in a more reserved way. Was sitting and working with these guys is. It's sort of like they telepathically work between Marty, Joe, and Bob. No communication. Mm. They just know. They just know what <laughs> what what what, you, what, what, what they is want. Like, is it like the Paisan, you know, communication? You look at each other. You all know how. Like I walk into a room with a couple of my guy friends. They all are Italian. They all know exactly where they're at, what they're doing. It's like they <laughs> communicate differently. Like kind of Scotty and his guy friends from, you know, from Yeah, Summer yeah, the, you know, the Jewish kids from the, the mean Jew streets of Rockland County, you know. <laughs> Tapping in the house. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, it's, they just have, for instance, we were doing a scene and it was, it was actually the scene that you just pulled up the, the photo of. And, and that's in this scene, I have most of the dialogue and I remember uh, doing the scene and going through it. And then Marty will come and go to uh, De Niro and go. So, so, you know, what do you think, Bob? What do you, what, you know, what do you think? Uh, you want to do three? You want to do three in a row? And I'm thinking to myself, well, Bob doesn't have any lines. <laughs> so... <laughs> And then Joe, Joe looks over at me and he goes like this. And so we, we did three in a row, but they just did. They, they're on point with each other. Yeah. They, uh, it's, it, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Dom, one of, one of Pesci's favorite lines of mine is from Casino. Well, you know, he's got this. Oh, quiet, yeah, yeah. Which this, one? Well, I'm going to take because, you know, you're talking about that little quiet thing he's got going when he's talking to the, the guy from the bank and he's like, oh. <laughs> Just about the time you're getting out of your coma, I'll you put my fucking money to sleep, and then I'm gonna come down to the bank and I'm gonna crack your effing skull open again. Yeah, uh, he's got so many. That's what I do for a living. One of <laughs> one of our favorite movies and one of our favorite guys, one of our favorite friends of this show, Chaz Palmentieri. You were in a Bronx Tale, yes. uh, yes. and I I found this picture of you got of Chaz sticking you up against the wall right here. Yeah, God, I remember that. Um, yeah. You were you were what sixteen or seventeen years old? I think fifteen, going on sixteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, wow. yeah. what was something like that? What was? Listen, between us, Chad, Chaz Palminteri, is he a good guy? Great guy. Is he? Great guy. I talked to Chaz maybe about three weeks ago. Oh, you, you met him three, you ran into him three weeks ago? No, no, I called him three weeks ago. Oh, really? Because last time, last time I spoke to him, he was talking some shit about you, Dom. Really? Yeah, yeah. He was a little disappointed with the way your career turned out. So <laughs> I wanted to give him an opportunity to talk to you face to face. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Hey, Dom, how are you? What's up, Chaz? Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I always tell everybody, and Dominic knows, I say, here's a guy who had the smallest part in the movie of all those guys, and he's got the biggest career now. 
So <laughs> you know what? That's because he was, he's really good and he's really disciplined. And I, uh, you know what? I'm very proud to see how his life went in his career. Went very proud of him. Love right. it, Chaz. I mean, when you when you were writing, when you guys were writing this story, you, it was well, basically about your hometown, right? Yes. Was there a real was there a real guy mm -hmm. named Nikki Zero in, in in your hometown? No. No, no, that no, was made no, up. No, that was well, originally, it was Nikki Four Eyes. Nikki, <laughs> Nikki Four Eyes. That was yeah, but I needed. I wanted something different, <clears throat> and then I just came up with. I went, wow, Nikki Zero, and then I just made it Nikki Zero. You know, just like that. <laughs> well, and, and he well, was. Chaz and I are both from the same neighborhood. Right. Wow. Both. Yeah, I love it. Both of us. Yeah, both of us are uh, same stomping grounds, and uh, and I remember he he he. he, he I, I, you know, that I had no ambitions of being an actor. I, I wanted to be a ball player. I wanted to play for the New York Yankees. I had those kinds of ambitions, you know, and, um, and I played sports my whole life. And, uh, and then I, I remember my mom coming home from the deli, Mike's deli. And, uh, and that's what everybody was talking about. They're going to have auditions, De Niro's movie, <laughs> you know. So my mom's like, you, you, you should go read. You should go there. You should, you should go. So to make my mom happy, I went. And I had blonde hair, blue eyes. And um, and one thing led, and then it just started. They, they took a photograph. They called you back. They called you back again. Then they actually put things in front of you to make sure that you were able to read. <laughs> And once you were able to read, you, yes. you you kept so the the thing kept dwindling. And I mean, Scott, I mean, every, they, people came from everywhere. Yeah, I bet. I mean, the lines were around the block. <laughs> and then I, I I I actually talked to Chaz, like I said, about three weeks ago, and I and I told I I, I told him the story. <clears throat> so I finally get the appointment to go to Tribeca to uh uh. The uh, the the, uh, the main office there, and I, I I remember they opened the door, and Chaz greets me at the door. Bob is in the back, okay, <laughs> on the phone doing something, and Chaz comes up to me and he goes, uh, he goes, oh, hey kid, thanks for coming in. Are you ready? You you know the stuff. You you're good. You you know it. I go, yeah, I'm ready to go, and. I didn't look at the page. I had it all up here and we did the scene. And by the time I got home, they had called for permission uh, for me to do the movie. And I got the wow. part. And my mom took that money. I only worked one day, <laughs> one day. Right. My mom took that money, made me join SAG. Wow. <laughs> wow. How, how smart was she, huh? How smart Brilliant. is he? Wow. Brilliant. And it was, a, and I always, I, I tell everybody, they're like, oh, you know, De Niro gave you a start. De Niro did, but it was actually Chaz. You know, Chaz, Chaz um, made people feel very comfortable, you know? So um, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 you're a natural, it. Dom. You were a natural. You know, you just, you had the accent, you had the, you had everything, you were natural. And, and we knew we wanted you, but we just had to make sure when you came back, Bob, and after you left the room, Bob and I looked at each other and said, hey, okay, that's it. You know, but I remember when I threw him against the wall, Scott, I said oh, to myself, yeah. <laughs> Let's I clear this up, Chaz. Let's let everybody know. That was yeah, a real line? slap. That was what's a real line? slap. When you do a movie with De Niro, you get slapped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Chaz, what, you remember what you're saying to him right here? Oh God! Oh yeah, he said, uh, uh, "Are you crazy? I'm going to get pinched or something. I'm, you're going to bring all the heat around us." Or something. Yeah, you're bringing heat to the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's yes, amazing. Yes. I that's get it all the time. I go, you know, did did Chaz really hit you? I'm like, yeah, he did, and it was fucking <laughs> cold out. It was cold that day. It was, it was, it was the end sorry. of the fall, and it was started to get cold, and 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 we did it a few times. Yes. You know, what was it like like as a young kid to get like get a role like that, not really understand it, right? Not understand like what you were kind of entering into, and then with some of the greats in the business, right? Like that's like a break. 
and then oh, get yeah, yeah. them. <laughs> Here's the other thing. A, a, a good portion of that scene is somewhat ad libbed. Yes. Like the truck, the elephant, the the, the the bullet stop and the truck and the elephant. That was that was me just rambling. Wow. And that was that's what's great. And that's what I noticed also from working on the Irishman was Marty would do that. So I get I I'm thinking, Chaz, that that's where De Niro got that from. Absolutely. That that freedom is like, okay, wow. now now, you know, let's stay within the parameters here. Right. But what do, you, do, do what you think is right. Do you know? Do it, yeah. and and it's so welcoming because as an actor, now you get to play. Right, and actors love right. to play. That's why it's so important that Bob and Marty, they both said that directing is eighty five percent casting. If you have the right person, he'll know what to do. Don't worry, and he they're right. You know, they're right. You know, guys. It's it's funny. The other last week we had Hank Garrett on. Chaz, I, I'm sure you know Hank is. He's sure. been. And eight million movies, and he was. We we had a scene from when he was fighting with Robert Redford in Three Days of the Condor, right. uh, and they're in an apartment. And he said in that scene, he actually broke Redford's nose while they were fighting. He made him uh -oh. a he hit him, and he and he broke Redford's nose. It happened. It happens. It happened. You know, Chaz, you got you got to be careful. Listen, buddy, I, <laughs> I know you're busy, Redford, right? Thanks for jumping on, my man. You know we love you, pal. You're the best. Uh, thanks so much. And, Dom, God bless you, man. And uh, God bless your career. You're doing great, fella. Love you, Chaz. All Thank right. you. And See Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and the family. God bless. Take care, Chaz. We love you, bud. What a great wow, day. That was, that was a great guy. surprise. Guys. <laughs> That's a Can I tell you question. something? We have um, family friends of ours. Their son is in. He's going through. He's a high school senior. He's going through um, chemo because he's got leukemia. He's got. He needs a bone marrow transplant. He's in the hospital for like five months. You know, big, strong, stocky kid. So we put together all these different celebs. You know, wishing him the best. Cele athletes. Chaz was the first guy I texted within five minutes. He had a, a video back to me. It was unbelievable. But um. Yeah, um Chaz never lost uh, that connection with the community. Right, right, you know? right. He never, he never lost it. Yeah, um, Dom. Listen, before we move on, um, speaking of fights, I, in Ray Donovan, the season you were on, right? You guys, you know, I don't want to give away any secrets here, but you kind of pretended to be in Staten Island, but I know that you were really over in Nyack, New York, um, just for the exterior. Just for the well, no, but you didn't. You guys, you had a fight scene outside that firehouse too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah but I, once you see us inside the bar, right? You're you're right. You're somewhere else. We're we're on the stage. It it and Suk, it's funny because you and I, Suk and I, have been in Nyack. I live not too far from Nyack, and mm -hmm. and one day I'm sitting. I was waiting for my wife to come out. I'm sitting on the street in my car, and I'm looking down the block, and I see the firehouse and the bar that's always been there, and I'm like, God wait damn it. A, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I went back, looked at the shows. I'm like, these mother effers are there in Nyack outside hey, the firehouse. I love that location because oh, so it's just great. right over the Tappan Zee Bridge for, yeah. for me. And I still call it at the Tappan Zee Bridge. Me too. I, me too. Uh, no, yeah. We still call I, it. I refuse, I refuse to call it the. Uh, we still call it the Brendan Byrne Arena. The <laughs> <laughs> Mario um, Cuomo Bridge. Exactly. Forget that. Um, Dom, I got to tell you, I just watched a King of Staten Island and my, my husband's a fireman and he was literally, he was like, hmm, that is such a well-written piece. There's a lot of insider trading going on in there. Right. That I don't think a lot, I think if you looked at, look at all the nuance on how it's written, it's pretty amazing. I'll tell you what's amazing about that that movie. <clears throat> First of all, Judd Judd is Judd Apatow. So a lot of it, there's a you know you have you have a structure of a scene and and, and dialogue and whatnot. But then there's also that right off the cuff kind of directing. Uh, let's try this. Let's try that. Let's try this because you got to try to find the comedy and and still at the same time tell the story. But what was great about that? And particularly this movie was uh, Pete Davidson's dad. There was a, 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 a coordinator uh, that was working on the film uh, by the name of John Sorrentino, who 
actually was a fireman in Pete Pete Davidson's dad's house. Mm -hmm. Oh, the engine company, or uh, I think they were a ladder comp engine ladder, ladder company. I think, yeah. And uh, and he just, you know, these guys just filled in with information, tried to make, you know, there was there was a lot of stuff in the firehouse, a lot more than what you saw that we shot. It's just, uh, you know, it was a Judd had his vision for what type of movie he wanted to make, and that's what he did. But there was a lot of stuff, and they. They played a lot of it in in montages and and whatnot, but a lot of that gets credited to uh, John Sorrentino um, for just making the that part of the film as authentic as possible. Uh, and I'll tell you, a lot of people will tell you it was pretty damn authentic. How great was Pete? How great I mean, was Bill? They were they were they were incredible. I was very. Um, they did a great job. I didn't even know if I wanted to watch it because I thought it was kind of like, you know, very unabashed, like the king of Staten Island. Like, you know, like it was just very much a lot of bravado. And I know he's been through a lot and I kind of wanted to see a little bit of like, well, what is Pete Davidson about? If he's going to talk about Staten Island, I want to hear it. I want to hear his story. Um, and not that it was autobiographical by any sense, but I mean, that there was obviously based uh, loosely on his life. Um, but boy, it was very, very truthful, and I have so much more respect for him as an actor, as a writer, as a creator, as a comedian, mm -hmm. all of it. I mean, especially a young kid who's been through so much, you know, and so much yeah. hardship at such an early age and having to come to terms with that. And I have to tell you, he's he is uh, one of the sweetest people I know. He really is. Yeah, you know, I recall like, yeah. Pete. Uh, he he was he was great with everyone. Um, and I, 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 about it. I remember watching. I remember being you know a few feet away from him, watching him. I'm like, you you, you know, you're gonna like you you know you're gonna you you're gonna, you're going to be happy with your stuff because I remember being away, just being in in, in the scene with him, and watching him and. It's not what he normally does, but he he has such a promising career as an actor. I, I think he's going to be able to take it in so many different directions as as Bill Burr. Bill yeah, Burr was right. fantastic. Love, Love Bill. Yeah. Love Bill. Um, Dom, listen, you know, like we said, I mean, we can go through, you know, so many great shows. I mean, look, you, were, you did The Wire. Everybody loved that show. Um, you got the Boardwalk. Yeah, you got black for that today on Twitter. I know. I saw that, Dom. I saw the guy. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know what? I'm I'm a little busy. I can't list every movie for God's sakes. <laughs> you didn't put you didn't put in the wire. Yeah. If I didn't put an entourage, I would have got yelled at for that. Well, I, right? Yeah. I love Twitter, man. I love it. But but listen, one of my one of my other favorites was uh was Entourage, right? And look, right. You, much younger with uh with with Turtle and those guys. And um, I gotta imagine that. During filming of that show, with all the with all the players and characters you had around it, that had to be probably you probably have a more fun off screen than you are on screen. I bet. Well, I I knew a lot of those guys. You know, I, I remember I I auditioned um, during the audition process. I I was in the audition room with them because originally um, I was supposed to be one one of the guys, but it was a different. It was a little bit of a different show. Um, and then it just morphed into the, uh, what it is now. Um, and then I, they, they called me, they called me to come and do a guest spot on it. And at the time I was shooting Miami vice and doing the fourth season of the wire. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and, and they, cause my, cause Michael Mann movie. So of course it yeah, went yeah. over and, um, so I'm flying back. So I, I never, I, I remember not reading the script. It was Doug Allen, Steve Levinson, Wahlberg. These are people who I know. Yeah. So, uh, absolutely, the people who I, I I'm there. I'm, I'm, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. Get to the hotel. I open up the script. I read the character. I was like, "What? What's going on? Like this guy is? Uh, I don't like this guy. <laughs> you know." And uh, make a long story short. Doug goes to me, he goes, listen, I need you to come in here and just turn their life upside down. 
<laughs> and and that's that's I I did what was on the page with a little bit of extra and uh, and and but it was fun and a lot of those guys are all my friends. Yeah, by the, Jerry, by I was way. actually on the phone with Jerry yesterday. Oh uh, yeah, you know what I I've always I remember when I was doing sports back at Picks, I was always trying to get oh, him. Dude. I yeah, was trying to get him yeah. to do to do Knicks, you know, talk Knicks and uh who's the uh, um I can't remember his name. He he was one of the other guy. He's a big Islander fan, lives on the Oh, uh, Kevin Connolly. Connolly, yeah. I yeah. was trying to get those guys in. I could never get a hold of anybody. Um, but funny thing is, Suk, and I I don't know if you even know, but Doug Allen, uh, my Doug Allen story is that he was married very briefly to one of our colleagues at Pix 11, Andy Adler, oh. who used to do the sports with me yeah, yeah. before I was with Suki on the morning show. <laughs> and it was funny because he, I, I was doing sports one night and she was there and, and I see Doug, he's sitting, he's got a Yankee hat on, he's in the studio. I'm looking over, I'm like, is that Doug Allen from the guy who created Entourage? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I, I just married him last week. I was like, oh, what? what? It was, I remember uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, but it was uh, it was a short lived uh, short lived marriage, unfortunately. But uh, that that's our our Doug, happened. our Doug me, Allen. Me, me and Sue have the same reaction. Yeah, um, yeah, right, right, right. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Listen, I don't say anything about any of that stuff. Like I learned a long time ago. Nope. Yeah, I just I remember Doug. I know Doug Allen. I met that guy once. Doug's a great guy. Dom, listen, man. Before you go, um, my my question to you is: with everything you've done. And all the different characters that you played, when you are approached for a part, do they still make you audition sometimes, or sometimes you just get it based off of, of what you've done? Yeah, I actually have to throw down an audition in a, after I get off the phone with you guys. Oh wow, okay. Sometimes you know, um, I, I it, it depends. It depends. Sometimes I get offers. Um, sometimes they, 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 it's you know. That I, I I can't make any sense of it, but yeah, yeah little, no, little sometimes you gotta sing and dance for your food, right? <laughs> I hear yeah. you. Well, listen, man, it was uh, an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for coming on our our audience. Usually, we'll interact with you, but I don't want to keep you another half hour. But our audience loves you. They're Everybody all out their mind right in. now. Um, you know, Do you sing, hello. Dominic? What's I'm looking that? At that? Say that again. I'm looking, I'm looking on the the screen here. Somebody mm -hmm. says uh, it's uh, Anita a Anderson. Yeah. Is, do you sing Dom? No. Oh, you. Oh, that's right. You you see him. That's right. Oh yeah, Dom. Well, we do. See, we always make our guests do a a trick, a talent. Do they sing? Because we like to sing. We like to think we're professional singers, Dom. Yeah. I'm oh, horrible. Dom, I'm listen. But before so you, bad. before you go, <laughs> I want to introduce I want to introduce you to the third member of our group. He's like our musical director, Phil. Uh, former military, former SWAT guy. Uh, one day he he sang he sang uh, "Easy" by the Commodores in his squad car, and put it out online. It went viral. Guys get over 120 million views. We he he was one of our first guests. He's like part of our family now, and he comes on and the, Dom. The women love this guy like you wouldn't believe they love him. Hey Dom. <laughs> I got to tell you, man, I am a huge, huge fan of yours. And when I first tuned in here, I thought I was looking in the mirror. <laughs> there you go. That's what you guys do look a little alike. That's very funny. I yeah, love it, yeah. Man. I love it. Too, well, many, I, too many new turns under the covers, right? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Don, but, listen, uh, man, thank you so much for coming on, but we really appreciate it. Hey, guys, thank, thank you for having me. And uh, uh, happy Merry Christmas. Christmas. And Merry Christmas. You too, man. Nice to meet you. Stop. Thanks, okay. bud. Bye -bye. Happy holidays, my man. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, so, man, I was hoping you were going to bring me on so I could meet I, that guy. Can I, can I just get out, uh, leave for two seconds? I need to give my husband some money. I'll be oh, right back. Oh, right you get out. We're singing. You know that. You leave. We sing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. I'll take her out, Phil. What's going on, my man? Uh, no, well, I was just saying uh, – I'm so glad you brought me in before he left because I wanted to say hi to that guy. Man, I, I love that dude. He is. Yeah, uh, I know. We we actually uh, we we kept him for about 40 minutes, and Chaz Palmentieri jumped on. So I didn't want to. Uh, he he was great though. My God, you can Phil, the guy's been in eight million movies. You can go through every one of them. Yeah, I know. I was just I was checking him out on IMDb, and you know, just about everything he's done, I've seen. Yeah. And, uh, 
I'm a big fan of his. And, and you so, know, the thing is, it's like I, I didn't want to play anything from any of his movies with the fear that our show would get locked up for copyrights. <laughs> Yeah, so I, didn't wanna, I couldn't. I don't want to play any scenes from any movies, so you know, I was stuck with these friggin' pictures. But uh, well, I mean, look at look at the show here on a Monday afternoon, Phil Chaz Palminteri, Dom Lombardozzi, just hanging out, talking to each other. I know, I know, and uh, you know, again, that just goes back to the Suki and Scott show and how everybody wants to be part of it because yeah, it's so I great. Agree. It's so uh -huh. great. Is it very funny that nobody knows where anything is in the house is except me? <laughs> After all this time, right, Sue? <laughs> Phil, would That's... you say that? Your wife knows where everything is? Your wife, um, you sounded exactly like my wife just then. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody knows where anything is. Well, listen, um, we, Phil, we were talking about at the beginning of the show, coming up on Thursday, Christmas Eve. Christmas. Uh, the world's going to be watching this thing. And here, this is what we have so far. And we're not even done yet. Not only is Phil going to be, Phil's got five songs on this show. Jordan Bennett, David Higgins, Hello Sister. And we're not even done yet. We're going to put out another graphic, another promo, because we're adding three more acts on this program, Phil. <laughs> it's going to be unbelievable. This thing is blowing up. Like, yeah, you know like, what it is, Phil? I think, like, you know, the connections that you and Scotty have to the musical world. I mean, I guess people are just like, they had so much fun on the show, they just want to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. They come on here. It's a great experience, and they just want to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Suk, will you be sending in any uh, music of your own, singing any of your favorite holiday tunes? <laughs> I'm not a singer like that. I, huh? I, I don't believe to be a singer. Sook, there's got to be there's got to be one Christmas tune that you like to like. You're in the shower and you're just like, what, what, what's it? What, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> He's got a mask on too because my friend is taking my old piano and giving. I'm getting uh, a little another new piano from my other friend, so we're piano mm -hmm. swapping right now. The king of stat. Ah, you're a piano player. Yes. Sweet. Unbelievable. Souk, there's, there's got to be a tune that you go to in the shower that you like rocking around the Christmas tree. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'll I'll download that auto-tune app that you told me to do it, and I'll go in my car, and I'll sing a song. <laughs> Come on, you got to do it. Grandma Stanford might even sing a song. All right, it's going to okay, be unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> will do, will do. This thing's coming together. I'm going to be putting this together for the next two months to get it done by, to get it done by Thursday. <laughs> we got something else we got to put together, too. I'm oh like, I don't God. want to give you too many things to do. You know, it started out as Phil was going to sing a couple Christmas tunes, and we were going to throw it up on Christmas Eve. Now it's just full-blown. I, I got I got producers, directors, everybody's chiming in. The Phil Posmitz. Yeah. Yeah, I know, you know, and, and this was originally just going to be something uh, that was going to happen as a side note on Christmas Eve, and now it's the main attraction. Phil, I was trying to put it up as an event on my Facebook page, too. You got to teach me how you did that. Okay, I mean, I create event and just kind of fill in the blanks. Oh, really? Yeah, but okay, just look at you, you're so good. I'm like, I never created an event, so I don't know what the hell that means. So I think you wrote you wrote on Twitter, um, Scott's putting together a best of Suki and Scott for Christmas Eve. I'm like, God, oh, that's not what it is. What are you oh, doing? I'm like, you know, it's just all in the boat. Oh, man. It's all good. All right, listen, man. Well, listen, Phil's here to sing. He doesn't want to talk. He wants to sing. I love talking to you guys, but I love singing also. So. Yes. By the way, doesn't. Doesn't Phil look extra um, vibrant in, in the daylight out there, Sue? Phil is like glowing, like he's it's glowing. like angelic, all that air, light flushing in. The guy's glowing. <laughs> look at him. Hey, I'm I'm loving life. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. Let's see, retired life. Oh, yeah, you go. I like that one. Nice. My, my wife let me. She let me open a, a Christmas present early, and this was it. Where did she get that? I need to get that for a friend. Uh, Amazon. All right. Yep. Love you it. Get anything on I Amazon. like the retired part. I want that because I have yep. a friend that I can get that. That's a great gift. Yeah, it's nice. It fits really well. I love it. It's my new favorite cap. Beautiful. Philly kid, what do you want to sing today, my friend? 
Well, let's start off with, uh, I put this one up today, it's doing really well. Uh, I'm gonna sing some of the songs that I've been put up for the past week. Nice. I've got like, uh, you know, almost half a million views just this past week on some of the songs I put up. Wow. But nothing will hear on the Christmas Eve special. Nothing oh, will no, no, no. the <laughs> Yeah, those are gonna be premieres. Santa Paws, <laughs> I love that. Santa Paws. Uh, how about a little Willie Nelson? <clears throat> love it. Maybe I didn't love you quite as often as I could have. Maybe I didn't treat you quite as good as I should have. If I made you feel second best, Girl, I'm sorry I was blind. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. Maybe I didn't hold you all those lonely, lonely times. I guess I never told you I'm so happy that you're mine. Little things I should have said and done. I just never took the time. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. Tell me. Tell me that your sweet love isn't mine. How old is How old is Willie Nelson? That guy's still one hundred and two. He's right. He's got to be how old? I think, think he's, he's a hundred. How he's old? Eighties. I bet he is, man. Still smoking weed like a madman. Yeah. Hey, what if that's what What if that's what has kept him going all these years? Probably the key to life. That could be the key to life, Phil. I think he's actually talked about that. I mean, for him. That has been a real big uh, lifesaver for him. Yeah. Hey, whatever it takes, man. Very. Listen, before you know it, every <laughs> state. Judgment-free state... zone here, Phil. Judgment-free yeah. zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, I've never judged anybody. I don't care. And I was a cop for 30 years. I Still, I don't judge anybody. No. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's How about sick. a little, uh, remember Johnny Rivers? This is an old song. Johnny Rivers. Uh, What's the song? Rockin' pneumonia and the boogie woogie flu. Yeah, and the boogie woogie rock the rockin' pneumonia. I don't think <laughs> I know this song. No? I want to jump, but I'm afraid I'll fall. I want to holler, but the joint's too small. Young man rhythm's got a hold of me, too. I got the rockin' pneumonia and the boogie woogie flu. Call some others, baby, that ain't all. I want to kiss her, but she's way too tall. A young man rhythm's got a hold of me, too. I got the rockin' pneumonia and the boogie-woogie flu. I want to squeeze her, but I'm way too low. I would be running, but my feet's too slow. A young man rhythm's got a hold of me, too. I got the rockin' pneumonia and the boogie-woogie flu. I said I got the rockin' pneumonia and the boogie-woogie flu. Oh, I don't think, yeah. think there's a vaccine for it either. Oh, look at this, Phil. You got a whole audience there. This is the problem in my house. You just saw the problem. <laughs> <laughs> a round of applause. <laughs> uh, uh, Phil, what's the big pl- what do you what do you usually do on Christmas Eve and Christmas? You got the family coming in this week? What's happening? Yeah, uh, one of my boys flew in from Cali. Uh, the other one's coming in. No, I'm sorry, he drove in. He was a couple of days ago. My other son's coming in from Cali. He's flying in tomorrow. Um, and yeah, it's just just a big family get together, you know. My wife cooks for like 12 hours straight and uh, <laughs> uh, we have a big, uh, big meal. And I mean, just, you know, big family get together, but we do, I do offer to clean up for her. 
but her answer is always get out of my kitchen. Oh, uh, yeah, because you know what? You do what I do, right? You just you pretend you're cleaning up, you screw things up on purpose, and then they kick you out so you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I even have to pretend I'm screwing up because you know I, I, I put I put a lot of stuff apparently up in the wrong place. So <laughs> Phil, you got to get it like we're like Dom Lombardozzi, where you just you're in like movie after movie. So Suki and I are waiting for you to get big, so you could take us with her, take you with. I know. Us yeah, with I know. I want to, man. That, that guy's career is brilliant, you know. Because like I said, I mean, we look like almost identical. You do. Where's, you where's still the look work? Like Jason Statham. I'm just gonna say that a little bit more. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that, Suki. <laughs> 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 but, uh, that's perfect, man. That's perfect. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I even got to audition for a uh, a De Niro movie earlier this week. But oh, wow, I haven't heard anything. So yeah, we'll know. let you. Fingers we'll crossed. let you know. Right? We'll <laughs> let you. you never hear anything unless you get. You don't hear anything unless you get the gig. Always, right? Right. Right. All right. That's. A, they don't even call. Don't you just want to say, hey, what was it about me that you didn't like? That's like every job that you go after. Like, <laughs> right. why, didn't you like, why didn't you like me? Why, why didn't you like me? <laughs> right, yeah. I was perfect. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's so funny, man. Well, listen, it's a um, special Monday afternoon edition of this program. Of course, it'll stay up, so it doesn't matter when it actually airs live. But uh, yeah, got, we have um, tomorrow night. Let me tell you guys what we have. We have Kim Fields from Facts of Life. Whoa! Back to life. Right, the Kim back Fields to life. played yeah, up. You got a grown show. You're learning now. You know about the facts of life. The facts of life. Well, the world never seems to be living up to your dreams, and suddenly you're finding out the facts of life are all about you. See, Sook, that could be your holiday tune right there. You could have just. I mean, I, st- I do sing, Scotty. <laughs> You have a beautiful I voice. I know you sing. We've sang plenty together. Um, Kim Fields, who played, uh, she played what? Tootie, Duty? Sook, what'd she play? Duty, Tootie? Tootie. Tootie. Tootie, right? And then we have a young lady by the name of Bianca Ryan, who was another America's Got Talent winner. Um, she's been joining us. She'll sing a little tomorrow night. Philly Kid will be on. And then Wednesday, we have another great show. And then, uh, you know, the big night on Thursday night, a little Christmas Eve action. Philly Kid, you want to take us home with a big finale? Yeah, let's uh, – in fact, let's do, a, let's do a duet or a triplet, however you want to do it. You, you guys know feelings? Feelings. Sure. Pull it up. We'll sing a verse of that each. Nothing more than feelings. All right, go ahead, Phil. You start it off. Feeling nothing more than feeling, trying to forget my feelings of love. Teardrops rolling down on my face, trying to forget my feelings of love. Somebody take the chorus. So if you want to... Feelings. Whoa, feelings, right? I yes. wish I never met you, girl. You'll never come again. Feelings. Whoa. Feelings. Whoa. Feel you again in my arms. You'll never come again. Go ahead, Philly. Feeling, <laughs> feelings like I've never lost you, and feelings like I'd never have you again in my heart. Thank you, Scott. Feelings, whoa, 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 feelings. Oh, 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 feelings. I thought I lost you guys. You'll never come again. <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, I was a junior in high school. I sat in my car and cried to that after a girl broke up with me one time. Really? That makes you cry. Feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you cried, right now, now we are all in our feelings these days. Everybody's oh, in their feelings. Oh, Morris. Hey, yeah. Albert, huh? 
Yeah, that was a, that was a good tune, man. How about uh, a little uh, last I, I one? Put, <clears throat> I put this one on uh, some Tim McGraw uh, a couple of days ago. Oh, I saw that one. Go ahead. I love that tune. Every Friday night, there's a steady cloud of dust that leads back to a field filled with pickup trucks. I got old hand cranking way up loud. I got coolers in the back and our tailgates down. There's a big fire burning, but don't be alarmed. It's just country boys and girls getting down on the farm. Oh, Ed's been on his tractor, ain't seen Becky all week. Somebody said they seen him heading down to the creek. Well, Farmer Johnson's daughter's just pulled up in a Jeep. Man, he knows how to grow them, if you know what I mean. Oh, Dave's getting loud, but he don't mean no harm. We're just country boys and girls getting down on the farm. Well, we're just country boys and girls getting down on the farm. And you can have a lot of fun in a New York minute, but there's some things you can do inside those city limits. Ain't no closing time. Ain't no cover charge. Country boys and girls getting down on the farm. Sook, you got to get your country on. You got to get those. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I like some country, not all country. Yeah, how are you not here. all those good-looking country singers out there? How are you not a country girl? I like a rock and roll chick. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Give us something. We'll finish it off. Go ahead. We got four minutes till the show goes off the air. I like I like Blake Shelton. I think I like him. I think really? I like I like him and yeah. a lot of Gwen Stefani stuff that they do together. It's kind of cool. Yeah, cute. It's okay. It's okay. It's cute. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that big song in God's country. I heard that this morning. I like that. That was nice. All right. All right, Philly, go ahead. One more. It's it's only it's Wednesday. We got time. Give me one more. Yeah, let's see. How about I mean uh, it's not I'm sorry, it's Monday. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, uh, I put this one up a couple of days ago, doing very well. Oh, oh, I love you so. Uh uh. I can't let you go, uh-uh, oh, don't tell me no, I need your love tonight. Oh, gee, the way you kiss, sweetie, you're too good to miss. Wowee, I want more of this, I need your love tonight. Well, I've been waiting just for tonight, to do some loving and to hold you tight. Don't tell me, baby, you got to go. I got the high fire high in the lights now. No way now. I want to say, oh, wow. Well, you better stay, pow, pow. Oh, don't run away. I need your love tonight. Woo! Little Elvis Presley there. Guys, we will see each other. We will reconvene tomorrow night at uh, 730. <clears throat> the uh, yeah. Chris Christmas Eve special rolls along. I know it's daytime, but let's sing it anyway. Good night, Good night sweetheart. Well, well, it's time, time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Just the boys in the back. We hate to leave you, but we really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, everybody. This concludes our broadcast day.